Hey everybody, how's it going? Uh, Blake from Speed Tech Performance back again today with another uh, another product uh, introduction. 850 horsepower T56 Bowler uh, Carbon Edition transmission. Um, it's going to be a fun car. Last six months, we've been uh, working really hard on the 68 through 70 Charger IRS full chassis project. Um, the car came to us from one of our good uh, dealers in Florida, Tom Argue Designs, Be builds beautiful stuff. Um, his customer brought the Charger to him and said, we need something that makes this thing drive. I just bought the car it drives like shit so what can we do tom's first call is to speed tech performance always and said i've got a customer 68 charger 440 four speed car um, wants to put a hellcat uh, red eye motor in it wants it to drive good what can we do we've got a bolt in you know, front subframe, we've got a torque arm rear already designed for that customer, or for that car, sorry. And he said, no, nope, we want to do IRS. So, okay, fast forward, ships the car here, scan it, 3D scan it, talk about some ideas. One of the things that I think is a little bit innovative and different from any of the competition really on a car like this, a unibody car, is we designed the chassis and the subframe to be removable. Couple of reasons. Um, with the IRS, you don't get any wheelbase adjustment in it because the rear suspension is fixed. Unlike the torque arm where you've got, you know, three quarters of an inch of wheelbase adjustment to center the wheels, put the wheels where you want it, um, because everybody's got a little bit different idea of where they should be. With the IRS, you don't get that. Uh, the rear wheel is fixed. So Tom also uh, wanted the subframe removable. Maybe it's a little bit, um, you know, his own preference, but he wanted it removable for engine install. Obviously, you know, with these cars, they've got the welded front sheet metal, inner sheet metal, the welded in, uh, core support, unlike a Camaro, where all that stuff unbolts. Um, it's just a lot easier to do engine install if you can remove the subframe. Put the engine, the transmission, all the parts and pieces on it, lift it back up into the car. One of the other things we did with the subframe is the subframe has the adjustment for the wheelbase built into it. It's got about an inch and a half of adjustment um, so that you can, you know, kind of center the wheel where you want based on the wheel size, the ride height, that sort of stuff. Along with that, we also designed it so that after the fact, after you get to that point, if you want to weld it in, it's, it's simple weld, weld it in, make it a one piece chassis. Kind of covered all that off, uh, uses our, our standard extreme front, uh, geometry dual power rack, forged spindles, C5, C6 Corvette, uh, brake package. The chassis itself um, attaches to the rockers like most other, uh, most other competitors do. Um, so it's cut the entire floor out all the way to the, to the trunk. Um, we actually designed the chassis to reuse the front spring hanger mounts that are factory installed. So you cut all the floor out except that spring hanger mount location. And what that does is it, it gives you a location for, for the frame to be attached to. We, we use some bolts to bolt it on. It gives you a way to hold the chassis while you're squaring up the car, getting the, the chassis in. Then what we did is we, the, the rockers, the inner rockers on this car have quite a bit of contouring to them. So they're not 
it's not a super easy place to weld the uh, the chassis rails to. So we came up with a T slot, a T plate that uh, welds bolt. First of all, it bolts into the side of the rocker. Then we weld it and weld it along the top seam where the pinch weld is on the top side. What that allows then is the frame to be lifted up from the bottom and, and the body rests on the top of that, that T plate. So now you're not really sort of supporting the frame and the body and you can tweak it, get it set up the way you want and then weld it in. Again, when you look at the rockers on this car from the bottom, at least on this one, Maybe on a brand new one, they were straight, but this one had a slight bow to the bottom of the rocker. So again, we have another L plate that goes up from the bottom and welds to the pinch weld and then to the, to the frame. So it's really, really robust in that area. It's a triangulated side frame rail. Uh, we have a center frame rail that encompasses the drive shaft loop and the transmission cross member. And then we get to the, to the IRS. The IRS, again, same system we use on all the cars, 56 inch wide, cantilever high mount uh, shocks with a 1.1 motion ratio. So you get really, really good control of the suspension, uh, adjustable sway bar, uh, obviously, alignment adjustments are, are standard with it. Again, our forged uh, spindle with a C7 hub. Uh, the axles are all 35 spline. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, I think we're the only ones that use a 934 CV, which is the big beefy CV. The standard axle package uh, comes with the Dutchman aluminum center, 35 spline stub axles, in the center, 33 spline stub axles in the uh, hub to fit the Corvette hub, obviously. Um, but that package is really good to 1,200-ish horsepower. Uh, it should be pretty, pretty safe. There's also an option for upgraded 300M axles and billet um, 934 CVs that'll, Dutchman is telling us will handle 1,800 horsepower, no problem. Uh, on this car, um, you can see the stance. Stance is, you know, pretty aggressive. These are an 18 inch wheel combination. These are just some wheels that we had uh, in the shop. So for display purposes, because the customer was getting a custom set of wheels made, we put these on so we could get an idea of the ride height, how the wheels fit, the measurements for the wheels that are needed. and. I think this car needs, you know, a, a 1920 combination, maybe 1919 combination. It's so big. The car is just big. The quarters are big. The fenders are big. Um, as good as it looks with the 18s, this car is going to get a 1920 combination. So it's going to run like a 325 in the front, I believe, and a 345 in the rear at this ride height. The other thing about this car, nobody wants to modify the charger hood. Uh, it seems like that is the holy grail other than having the serial number plate still on the inner fender well, which I don't understand, but it is a thing. Um, this one has the Hellcat red eye motor installed under the stock hood with this ride height. And it still has five inches of ground clearance. So the packaging was very, was very critical in this car and I think we really hit a home run uh, all the way around on it and really looking forward to getting this thing out and seeing what it uh, what it performs like it should be a monster